All right. Yeah. So today um, is episode four. Last week we didn't have any episode because life is life. And we have three major topics to go through today. One of them is um, CCTV, facial recognition, Trinidad and Tobago. Apple has to use USB-C now in their phones. And well, we just go and ramble or talk about Elon Musk and Twitter. So let me introduce to you. Our co-host, my name is Mr. Charles from Make It Simple TT, and my co-host is Mr. Redbit Tech himself, Redbit Tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah so government names, right? Yeah, probably eventually, but no, 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 right no, 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 no government name ain't coming on, no government. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we are two Trini Tech people, and we talk about tech from our, our perspective. Where making it easy for other people to understand, but also going deep enough to show that, yeah, there is a lot more to technology than just Android versus iOS. <laughs> like, and it's just a coincidence that he uses iOS and I use Android, but, you know, yeah. welcome to the podcast. <laughs> All right, so, um, oh, I get the podcast up on Google now, so if you search the name of, try, try searching, yeah, um, try searching Trini Techcast on Google, tell me where you get it. Let me see if the podcast comes up. If it comes up, I win. Trini Tech Cast. You might see the YouTube videos and things, but yeah, YouTube came up. The, and they do have the podcast Anta? to play. Yeah, it's yeah. able to play there too. Right, good. Anta, okay. Anta, so. All right, so you could play straight on Google now. If you just search Trini Tech Cast on Google and you just press the one on top, it will play. All right, in, cool. In, yeah, in, yeah, in nah, good stuff, man. Good stuff. All we're right, coming yeah. along slowly, but yeah, we're getting there. You know, Apple, Apple has some oops yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, so. But the, yeah, we'll, we'll so, yeah, yeah, let's. Let's get it it facial up. recognition to fight crime. That was a big story. Well, not probably not this week, but for the past couple of weeks, you know. And for me personally, crime is something that I think we could all agree getting out of hand in China. You know, that not just the numbers, but the type of crime, you know, the, the, the type of weapons people are using, you know, from and the, the, you know, it just and not just the the not just targeting you know fellow fellow um, gang members or whoever you know it's a lot of innocent bystanders so for me it's all getting too political crime is something that needs yeah, I tell you a serious, now, honestly, I, serious I focus be, i honestly be driving around um yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah uh, honestly i'll be driving around kind of very concerned sometimes and like winding up, I never used to be like, you know, winding up windows by lights and locking doors and all them kind of thing. Or when you go in a car park and all kind of drama. But I, yeah. I legit live in that almost fearful life um, in Trinidad, even though I know, well, it is what it is, but it can't be that bad. Well, it can't be. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be, it just, just look at it as you're being vigilant, you know, yeah. you lock your doors, know your surroundings, even your own home, you know, you have to make sure. Things things secure your gate. Yeah. You know, if you have your cameras home, if you have additional security system. And it's all exactly. about yeah. and I guess in this case, yeah, deterrence. Right? So yeah, most, deterrence. Yeah, true. Most crimes, well, at least how it used to be, used to be crimes of opportunity. You know, yeah. so you look for the for the target that might offer at least resistance. You know, you look for a target that you know will be kind of easy. Yeah. But now it's anybody because everybody could be easy. Yeah, and my dog, man. Yeah. Um, right. Okay, cool. Because as, as soon all the time before the show, we talking, you know, not her back. But as soon as the show start, she decide I want to start too. All right. So what's the article? It was published on the second of November. So the article is kind of old, but it's a running conversation has been going on, and uh, it starts off with um the police intensify their efforts to fight the rising murder rate and acting police commissioner. This is uh, McDonald Jacob. So he said that facial recognition software to detect and prevent crime will be coming soon, right? They will be soon using that. And that comes off the heels of the government. So they're spending $80 million to acquire and install 2,500 CCTV cameras across the country. And, well, <laughs> that, that have two things to unpack here. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> the first thing that pops out to you. Do criminals really care about cameras? <laughs> <laughs> somehow, somehow, I know that would have been one of the first questions. Right, because, I mean, we had COVID, if so, even before COVID, yeah. somebody come to do a robbery, five out of ten times they might use a mask. Now we had COVID, 
mask become more regular, you know. So yeah. probably nine out of ten times now, somebody will use a mask when they come to come to rob you in your home for car. You sometimes when they come to do a, a shooting, depending on how public the place is, uh, they would use a mask and with this facial recognition, see through the mask to help because this is not just prevention they also said detection you know which means they're going to try and solve crimes with this facial yeah. recognition yeah um well with the mask i think that um i think what they what what they could do is when they have a, a robbery that takes place and they have like a suspect the they will have a facial detection database to check to see if they saw that suspect in a particular location or last known location now. because um a lot of the times when the crime takes place they will be like do you do you know anybody who would have probably do that or they'll probably see the silhouette of the person from the um from the home cameras and they'll be able to get a suspect list and then they will start to use the cameras across the country to be like okay this person was spotted in this location or at mm -hmm. that point in time and so you're gonna be dependent on we need a lot of cameras around the country to more or less for them to kind of... Well, it's 2,500. They say before, before I remember in like previous times, they were like, they never said the amount of cameras that they had before, but all I know, they were, there were cameras around the Savannah. There was some mm -hmm. in Port of Spain. Um, they had these kind of, you know, the, the kind of looping ones that look like a um, yeah, yeah. Mika arch right here. And most of the um, streets in Port of Spain had those looping ones, especially in East Port of Spain, because that's kind of drive through those sorts of those streets to get through get through traffic to get out easy now. Right. So so you more or less need to capture them before they put on their mask, right? So you're probably gonna identify <laughs> them by by the clothes or, or the shoes or something. And if I well, if I was a criminal and this uh, this coming into play, all you need to do is change, you know, change somewhere that you know nobody could see or whatever, no cameras, change into your I think they call it your drill, your drill outfit. Change into your drill outfit, go and do your drill, come back, change and, it. And then your mask well, can. Okay. Um, that, will, that, will, that will be a problem, right? That will be a problem, definitely. Uh, the, the, the issue that's going to come up for me is the surveillance part of it. Mm. Because in order for them to now start to find where people are on particular parts of the country based on the cameras some surveillance had to take place because they will have to have the facial recognition system on and they will basically send out a little a flag when they say okay this person was spotted in Chagunas that person was spotted by this camera here because the 2500 of them going up I would gather that they would put them in um, areas where like you're on highways or corners or you know those, those sorts of places so the surveillance part now will be an issue because now I will be a part of a facial detection system that I probably didn't agree to. Yeah, that was now thinking like if do our laws, you know, allow for stuff like this. If we have any policies in place, you know, for so I, I, I will be passing and I will be given. I mean, we have it happens with private property, and you know, if you're passing from from someone's house as cameras, you know, you get captured. But there's like a wide scale surveillance and you know, almost like with china <laughs> as, exactly you know because exactly. i mean me between me and you we, we live in a, a country that's that's not ideal meaning we have corruption taking place and right. taking place within the police force yeah so who's to say the surveillance wouldn't be used you know for bad instead of good watch this article here right this one is um this was from twin this is cnbc from 2021 right what they said here is um most of the big companies they stopped selling facial recognition to lawmakers because they're still grappling how to properly regulate the technology in at the state and a federal federal level right that meaning that means that the us and them struggling to figure out how to put facial recognition in because of privacy advocates, right? Mm -hmm. Privacy and liberty advocates. We don't even have, I, do we have any like, you know, um, privacy driven body in Trinidad to say, like you ever hear about a, a privacy? Like, you know, you know, you have TAT and, and so. or anybody else. Um, 
that's a that's a big deal because it's nice to say well yeah we're gonna get facial recognition and we're gonna put that in and we're gonna fight crime and whatnot but then when you think about the food if you want to live a first world um have first world technology you had our first world laws yeah and it it almost seems like we are a step behind we're trying to catch up because i mean the u.s has the same place a number of years now you know so yeah. the data is there they are the, they have a they are more or less a case study you know you can see what, what worked what didn't work and clearly right now coming out from their implementation they're having a lot of issues in terms of privacy and you know probably also how effective is it against detecting and you know preventing crime so well, talking but about we still the, we still going to invest millions of dollars into this just because of that. Yeah, it's a nice buzzword now. It's like it's you know, right? The <laughs> amount of evidence that it has, and it's, know, so. it's kind of remind me of when we try to have like you know Wi-Fi and thing in cities and and whatnot and them kind of thing, and you kind of realize, oh, it was nice to go to a a, a, a country away and you have Wi-Fi citywide or some kind of thing like that, but then you didn't really think through. How difficult it is to maintain them yeah. antennas and, and, and keep the, the system up and load balance it and all that kind of drama. So that's our next thing. We're gonna invest all these millions of dollars to install and buy this equipment. But who's going to maintain the cameras? Mm-hmm.